Our other drug is completely and utterly unique. It's a protein, an enzyme. It's enterically coated and it's designed to be given with an antibiotic. Hi, I'm Lucy Ellis, Senior Editor at Scrip, and I'm here at BioEurope in Berlin, and I'm joined by Jeff Riley, the CEO of Synthetic Biologics, a late-stage clinical company with two drug candidates in the clinic, and they're based in the US. So we're here to find out a bit more about what they've got going on. So thanks for joining me, Jeff. What is it that you're developing that addresses an unmet need? Um, thanks for inviting me here, by the way. Um, we have two drugs going into phase three, and both address microbiome-related issues. One is for irritable bowel syndrome constipation, and the other drug is a preventative that takes care of C. diff infection, as well as it reduces antimicrobial resistance and colonization by nasty pathogens. And what's different about these programs, and how do they stand out? Because they're awesome, that's why. <laughs> so our IBSC drug is, there are a variety of competitors in that space. Um, they treat the symptoms of the disease, but they don't treat the underlying cause. So our drug treats the underlying cause and fixes the problem from the get-go. So that's, a, that's a, one really critical differentiating factor for us of our drug versus the ones that are in the market today. Our other drug is completely and utterly unique. It's a protein, an enzyme. It's enterically coated and it's designed to be given with an antibiotic, beta-lactam antibiotic specifically, in order to break that antibiotic down when it gets into your gut, therefore protecting the trillions of happy little bugs living in there. And what are the next sort of clinical steps then? Where are you up to with development? Uh, one drug, we're ready to go into phase, a phase 2B3. It's been given the green light by the FDA. That's for IBSC. Our other drug has breakthrough designation, and we are in negotiations with the FDA right now as to what we have to do next. And why do you think there's so much interest now in the microbiome as a therapeutic space? I, I think the interest stems from the fact that a lot of research today shows that a, many, a, a plethora of diseases seem to have their genesis in us doing something bad to the microbiome, whether that's food poisoning, whether it's antibiotics. Um, there are connections with multiple sclerosis, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, um, diabetes. There's a whole plethora of these type of diseases that if we can keep the diversity and the sheer numbers of your microbiome intact, likely that will have a profound impact on your health as you get older. And what challenges remain then in this space? Uh, the challenges are we don't know much about it at this stage of the game. So there's anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 species. Um, we don't know which ones they are, but they're very different from person to person. So what is the optimal group of those that, for each person? We don't know that either. Um, we know diversity is important. We've been killing off hundreds of species over the years since we've been given antibiotics since the 1930s. So we don't know at this stage of the game. So obviously a ton of research is happening, primarily in academia, where they're looking at how, how this affects various diseases and then how, if we can reverse those bad effects on those diseases. And you're active in this kind of emerging R&D area, but are there any other uh, research trends that have caught your attention? Um, research trends, we, we love the microbiome. We think that that's a, a place where there are a lot of unmet needs that we can affect in some way, shape or form. We also like proteins and enzymes and delivering things to the GI tract because it eliminates a lot of the issues, right? That you don't get systemic exposure, you don't have off-target activity typically, so they tend to be very, very safe drugs that have some type of therapeutic impact. And what should we look out for then from Synthetic Biologics in 2018? We feel pretty strongly that both of our drugs work very well and address some serious unmet medical needs, multi-billion dollar markets. So we hope again as we go into next year that we'll be able to provide clarity on what the FDA wants us to do with our C. diff preventative drug, but also what we could do next with the other drug as well. And we'll move those drugs forward and hopefully go into the marketplace. And you're here at Bio Europe, so what's your partnering strategy? What are you looking for? Uh, we are the guys with two phase three drugs that are unencumbered at this point. So, you know, we have a lot of meetings with folks, which is great because we do have these two drugs and, you know, we're hoping to find a partner for one or both of them that would help us get to the next level. And looking further ahead then, what are your expectations for the microbiome R&D space more generally? I think we probably have 10 to 15 years left to really figure out exactly what's happening in that environment. And keep in mind that you have thousands of species. Each of those species also creates multiple metabolites. We don't know what those are yet, to, to a large extent. Um, and each one of those also has a virome, so there's a variety of viruses that infect each and every one of these bacterium or archaeans. We don't know how those interact with us as well. What we do know is that they co-evolve with us, they're supposed to be there, what their activity and what their purpose is, you know, that's for the, the really smart science folks in academia to figure out.
And there's a lot we're still learning, so what's it going to take to get to, to all these answers? Lots of NIH funding for, for a lot of universities. Uh, that was all my questions, so thanks for joining me today. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay.